Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, <clears throat> I represent a lot of small municipalities and boroughs and townships like many of the other members do as well. And they all have, uh, many of them are financially distressed uh, as far as their water and sewer authorities. Uh, and because of that, they're not taking care of their infrastructure needs and uh, almost completely ignoring preventive maintenance needs, basic preventive maintenance needs. Uh, and I was just curious, uh, do you see this as a growing problem? And what authority does the PUC have to step in on and, and do something about this? And in reading your materials that you had sent out to us, on page 15 it says, in the water and wastewater industry, the commission maintains a policy on, acquisi on acquisition incentives. The commission promotes a water system viability and supports regionalization efforts. Uh, and goes on to say about having larger areas by them, by the smaller ones out. What specifically are the incentives? Sure. So I want to go back to 2008. We had close to 500 distressed water systems here in the Commonwealth. Um, that through the work of the Commission along with the DEP, a lot of these systems, to your point, uh, f basically were, were undercapitalized. There wasn't adequate pipeline replacement. There were water quality issues in some cases. And so through our collaborative work with DEP, we'll basically we, we stress test a lot of these entities. And we found that in doing so, uh, whether it was a DEP or just simple commission regulations, that we took a list of 500 distressed systems and it's somewhere below 100 now. And the, the, the silver lining there was that our investor-owned utilities like Aqua, Pennsylvania, PA American Water, United Water stepped in and took over these distressed systems. The incentives for those companies to come in is one, you're getting investor-owned, credit-supportive utilities that have good operational discipline to run these systems and they invest the capital using things like the distribution system improvement charge, being able to use things like single tariff pricing. And so that example of investor owns buying these systems, um, it's created a, a really kind of a national success story in the water sector where a lot of these systems that were on the edge uh, are now professionally maintained, run by a respected company, and the capital that's required to, to maintain the system and water quality being first and foremost and having affordability in the rates, that has all been accomplished. The incentive has been basically we incent these investor-owned utilities with some type of goodwill in their next rate case with an incentive-based return on equity for doing so. And, and what about for sewer authorities where they're not in, investor-based? Well, there's been a couple, you know, where I live in Chester County, you know, American uh, did buy Coatesville and as part of that system they bought their, the, the, the Coatesville um, sewer authority as part of it. Um, honestly, I'd, we'd like to see more of that happening, um, but there's a discussion taking place as you talked about the, the, these assets being distressed and these municipalities being distressed is there's a movement afoot from infrastructure funds that want to come into the marketplace and invest in these systems as well. So getting away from a traditional investor own, owning the op, owning and, and maintaining the system to now potential P3 operator agreements that are might unfold here in the next, you know, five to eight years in Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 